All right, guys, welcome to next week. We're going to talk about the urinary system today. With just a couple of housekeeping items. Midterm is this week. It's a, it's a quiz on prefixes and suffixes uh, and putting words together. Most of the root words are from the urinary system. So I'd really focus there with the terminology builder as far as building com complete terms understanding surgical terms, uh, understanding anatomic terms, understanding position terms, and I will have an additional uh, video that goes over that in detail, talks about different prefixes and suffixes uh, that I think will help you really get ready for the midterm, but that's what the midterm is about. I'll try and get that out in the next day or two to give you guys a couple of days of study as well. Uh, quiz score is much better this week. Still some people struggling to understand combining form questions. So I, here's some additional examples. And if you're having questions with those, text me, call me, they, you know, email me, whatever, so that we can make sure this is crystal clear. But if the question says, what's the combining form for foot? What is the correct answer? Podo or podiatry? Well, the correct answer is podo. This is the combining form. This is a complete medical term. Even though you're using the combining form, and even if you put this backslashing, backslashing here, this is a complete term. This is the combining form here. These are what these, they're asking you. Again, what is the combining form for ribs? Costo or intercostal? So even though you're using the combining form here, this is a complete term. This has a prefix on it. This has a suffix on it. This is all they're looking for. This is what your answer needs to be. Coast slash O. That is the combining form. Uh, so hopefully this week there won't be a problem for anybody. So the urinary system is all about filtration. Um, blood flows into and out of the urinary system via renal arteries and veins. Um, and these structures pass into the kidney. As you can see here, this is called the hilum right here, renal hilum. This is an opening. Now, combining form for opening is neato. And we'll, we have some other terms for that later, but, but if they say in the quiz, what is the combining form for opening? It's neato. Nothing more. Um, so, structures come in and out of the uh, kidney via the renal hilum right here. Uh, it then flows into a glomerulus, and we're going to see this on the next slide, where it's filtered at a place called Bowman's capsule. Um, so, again, here's some more combining forms. You can see this is a complete term. This is a combining form, just so hopefully we get that clear. Uh, what's uh, filtered? Well, nitrogen and waste, these are at, azato. So, azotemia, that's extra nitrogenous products in the blood. So, these are things such as urea, uric acid, creatinine, and ammonium. It also balances out electrolytes, potassium, uh, sodium, uh, magnesium, things like that are all balanced here. And so, uh, in fact, I had a patient uh, just yesterday, we were planning to do surgery on her. She was hyperkalemic, which means she had too much uh, potassium. We had to cancel because that can affect the stability of your heart. Uh, and so that was no go there. Um, and then, of course, products of uh, protein, uh, uh, metabolism and albumin, albuminol, albumin is a type of uh, protein in your body. So here you see the nephron, this is what I'm talking about, comes into the glomerulus here. This is Bowman's capsule. This is a kidney cell, which we call a nephron, uh, this kind of yellow. And here's all the arteries and, and cap, capillaries around it. That's filtering is going on throughout this whole, this whole thing. Here they go. They live here. You can see here. It's showing you where these nephrons live, right? So it comes in the artery, goes out the vein once it's been filtered. Um, so what it filters out is concentrated into urine, and then urine, urine goes down the uh, ureter. We'll go back to this other slide. It goes down your ureter here, and it collects in your bladder. So they flow from the via the ureters and then stored in, in your bladder, okay? The bladder then flows out of the, the urine flows out of the bladder through the urethra right here. And then uh, 
out of the body via, via the urinary meatus, right? So this is, uh, you know, if you look at a penis, you can see this, uh, vagina, you can see this, uh, but uh, you can see the uh, the urinary meatus here. Um, you know, it does flow past the prostate gland in men. If men have BPH, which is benign prostatic hyperplasia, uh, they can also have what we call oliguria, which is a scant amount, scanty amount of urine, right? So make sure you understand what oligo means. Uh, this week is scanty, okay? Um, and then here's these other terms. Make sure you know, you guys should know my name. you got to know your name. you got to know those terms, and uh, that will be a big help to you. Well, what is some of the pathology we see? Well, the most popular thing we always hear about is kidney stones. So nephrolithesis. Um, remember, we learned about these with uh, the gallbladder, right? Uh, and uh, cholelithiasis, right? So we have nephrolithiasis now. Um, and you can see here a demonstration, right? Depending on where the stone is found, for example, this would be nephrolithiasis. This would be ureterolithiasis, right? Because it's down in the ureter, all right? So depending on where you find these at is, is how they're going to be named as far as their anatomy goes. Uh, polynephritis, right? My, sorry, pyelonephritis. This is acute infection of the kidney. Uh, pyo, this is pus, right? So this is a combined form for pus, pyo, P-Y slash O. Uh, Sometimes you'll see this pyorrhea. This means you're actually getting discharge, right? Discharge of pus. This comes from the kidneys. It could be in your urine, right? Uh, pyuria. So this is pus in the urine. Uh, dysuria, right? This is a hard time peeing. Hematuria. This is this is blood in the urine. Bacteria. Urine. This is uh, bacteria in the urine. So here's a good example of uh, the using. Euro, which is the combining form uh, for urine, uh, with different prefixes here. So the combining form there, put this word up, dysuria, and ask you what's the combining form for urine. This would be the answer, euro, right? Or if they give you euro and say, what's this combining form is urine? Or they say, what, here's, what is the, the word is urine, what's the combining form? The word would be euro, this, this right here you are slash o if you put hematuria this would be a complete word even if you put a slash right here that's a complete medical word so uh now this can cause bacteremia sorry misspelling there uh which can uh, concentrate bacteria bacteria in the blood so what's another thing diabetes is a big thing we deal with in the medical profession uh nowadays um and uh, some of the symptoms that are associated with the urinary system, this could be nocturia or ketouria. No, ketones are heavily heavy in uh, diabetes. Uh, the body uh, requires certain things, and so it'll start breaking down certain things to get that, and then it produces extra ketones. Um, and so you can get ketouria when that's going on. In fact, there's diabetic ketoacidosis which if they produce uh, so, too many, uh, too much uh, ketones, then uh, your body goes into shock. So um, with long-stranding uncontrolled diabetes, we develop chronic kidney disease. This is permanent damage that's done to the kidneys. Now hypertension can also do this too. Uh, and you can end up in end-stage renal disease. And the treatment here for that is dialysis or kidney transplant. Anybody seen dialysis or knows anybody on dialysis, you don't want to get on dialysis. So make sure you're taking care of your kidneys, okay? Uh, and this is just kind of, but dialysis is separation across the membrane. Remember that. It's going to be on quizzes. It's going to be on all kinds of things. Dialysis is separation across the membrane, okay? So basically they're taking the blood out. It's going through this solution. Here's the membrane, right? And there, there's blood on one side, there's the diacylate, which is the solution, and then it's drawing things across that membrane um, to filter the blood. Then the, then the clean blood is then pumped back into uh, the person. Um, and so this takes a process of a couple hours, once, once, I mean, three times a week usually, 
but the, <clears throat> that's what uh, would be required in the case of in-state renal disease. Um, so make sure you're be aware of that. So my spiritual thought for this week, uh, what is truth? Um, you know, what, it, it has so many definitions. In fact, I think about Joseph Smith whenever I think about this and the fact that he was searching for truth and depending on who he asked, he got different answers. Depending on what minister he asked was a different answer. Depending on what he read was a different answer. So what is truth? Well, some things I think about what was true 50 or 100 years ago is not necessarily true today in, man, in man's thoughts. Um, remember, people thought the world was flat. And a long time ago, medical providers didn't think it was any benefit to washing your hands. Um, and so, in fact, I recently read a talk from uh, Elder Uchtdorf, who talked about this very thing. There, there was a guy uh, who had an increased uh, birth uh, death rate, um, and he was wondering the difference, and this was many years ago. So he went out and did some research and visited other offices and found out that some offices, the doctors went from autopsy, uh, when you're handling all kinds of chemicals, to childbirth without washing your hands. Well, I found out that those who who washed hands in between autopsy and uh, childbirth, that the, <clears throat> the death rate significantly dropped. Well, he tried to convince other people of this, and they said that that's, that was crazy. So, uh, turns out later, that many, year, many years later, that in fact that's the truth. So, some things I think about when we try to define truth. Truth is unchangeable. Do, do simple facts change eternal truths? And do faults of people or entire groups of people change eternal truths? We're blessed in this church to have eternal truths and to know how to obtain eternal truth. <coughs> the pattern has been set before us uh, in the restoration. And that includes diligent study, acquiring the knowledge through the study of the best books, as it says in the Doctrine and Covenants, establishing a house of prayer and fasting and, and doing those things, and then going to the Lord and asking, we can obtain eternal truth from a source that does not change. But what's different today is that many people want to shout from the large and spacious building that the truths that we hold so near and dear are not necessarily true. And they want to debunk these truths by attacking the faults of certain people or entire groups of people to try and get us to think that because these people did something, these eternal truths are not true. They love to attack the Prophet Joseph Smith. They love to attack President Monson. They love to attack the Mormon pioneers and different things that happened many years ago, the acts of polygamy, the blacks not being the priests until 1978. Regardless of their attacks, eternal truths don't, be, don't change. The fact that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world doesn't change. The fact that the Holy Ghost can be here to help us as we live righteously, that doesn't change. The fact that the church has been restored and that the gospel is on the face of the earth, it doesn't change despite what distractors might try to say. Truth comes from God. If you're having questions about what truth is, if certain things are true, then you have to be like we talked about before, go through the process. And the process certainly does not involve listening or talking to people who are in the large and spacious building. It involves fervent study and then communication with God. I bear witness, if you'll do these things, that you'll receive that witness. These are true. I bear witness that the gospel is true. This is his church. Christ is the savior of the world. And that as we come to him, he will reveal those truths to us. May God bless you with your studies this week. Be successful, be diligent, and let me know if you have any questions. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.